Mm-hmm. Well, hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to the show. Okay, uh, this is um, part two of uh, two shows. One has already been repeated on Eminem, and it's on YouTube for uh, for you guys who who missed it. And this is the second one, uh, basically telling you uh, how the format is going to go. Um, starting in January and February, we're going to be filming uh, these shows from home. There'll probably be a repeat in January of one of these two shows. And basically, right now, for the first couple of minutes, I'm going to give you an update. Uh, and then I'm going to go into detail uh, with more of the shows at home. Basically, we're nonprofit, okay? So uh, when we go to YouTube uh, in January, February, because it's really difficult to come up here and, you know, wearing a mask and. It's easy to do at home, and, you know, they're promoting that, you know, to the show from home, and then you can repeat on m and and then you can have more repeats on YouTube. Okay, fine. Uh, but we're nonprofit. So when we go to YouTube, uh, we're basically a nonprofit organization representing Manhattan Neighborhood Network. You know, they give us a studio, and we do a show. Okay. Uh, but if you want to subscribe and you want to give us a thumbs up, the comment section will be open if you want to uh, put in... Uh, your opinions, your, your reviews on what I'm, you know, things that I'm talking about, that'd be fine. I'm not re- re- really worried about the numbers as far as algorithms and all that. I'm not into that. And again, uh, YouTube is just a platform. I'm not a YouTuber because we're not going to be there long. Um, like once I joined the union for the Actors Union, yeah, it's pretty much going to be a wrap for this show uh, because of conflicts of interest uh, as far as the union goes or whatever they're talking about. But anyway, so these two shows. Um, uh, basically going to tell you the format and, uh, and the updates. And that way, once we go to YouTube, um, I'll be recording from home, and you're going to see my little makeshift studio at home. I'll be showing a lot of books, magazines, a lot of collectibles, uh, you know, little things like this here. Uh, and I'll be able to show you more magazines, uh, a, a lot of things, because it's really a drag trying to bring things up here to the studio on 59th Street uh, over in the west side, uh, considering I work from downtown. So... Um, there'll be a lot more behind the scenes uh, stuff going on for that. Okay, so um, also I'm gonna have links for uh, Instagram accounts. There's no website. It's gonna be uh, uh, Instagram that um, automatically posts to Facebook. Uh, we're gonna open TikTok soon, starting in January, and that's gonna be for all the musical things I'll be doing. Also uh, relating to uh, SoundCloud. Again, more details on YouTube. Okay, uh, basically people are saying, hey, how about all, all these movie reviews? There's tons of it, okay? I'm going to be uh, putting them in categories. I'm going, going, going over a couple of things that's happening with the market nowadays. Uh, you know, the streaming, uh, they're coming out with the, the making of The Godfather, Citizen Kane on, on Netflix, and a whole bunch of things like that. So, um, and you see Wonder Woman has gone directly to... Uh, one of the streaming sites, yeah, HBO Max. They're trying to compete uh, with the big boys they, uh, because these guys got deep pockets. Amazon, Apple TV, uh, Netflix, uh, Disney Plus. You figured uh, Wonder Woman would uh, be there, but the HBO is trying to compete against the big boys here. So don't be surprised to see the woman is uh, Godzilla versus uh, King Kong. That's a rumor that uh, HBO Max might get the rights to that. Uh, 007 is still lingering. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to make it to the theaters. Uh, the movie just is just way beyond too much. With the virus going on, they're never going to make the money back. Over here, HBO is t- trying to have big pockets like the other ones. Uh, for example, uh, Coming to America it was supposed to come out in Christmas time. And Netflix, no, you don't. We'll take that. Thank you. <laughs> Again, deep pockets. That's how this, this is going. Okay? Um, so because of that... We have tons of movie reviews. Me, personally, I uh, subscribe to Amazon and Apple TV. I bought an uh, iPad, and Apple TV came free for one year. Hey, why not? I'm always ordering crap on Amazon TV. Bad habit. And I get Amazon Video Prime. Hey, why not? And, of course, uh, right down the hall, the neighbors got Disney+. Plus. Hey, I bring the candy to the kids and hang out with the parents. And uh, my friend has Netflix. And, you know, and... We're at the house. We have all our masks. You know, we're six feet. He, one person at the end of that couch and me on the other end of that couch. But it still works, you know. Uh, and let me tell you, people, so there's nothing to see. There's more than enough uh, to, uh, to see, depending on your choice. Netflix is going to have a bunch of movies for the new year, a lot of old oldies, but goodies. As a matter of fact, one, I want to uh, say something. Um, for example, Ma, Ryan, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. 
Okay, that was supposed to be released uh, for November Thanksgiving. Then it postponed it to Christmas, and that's going. I believe that's going on Netflix. Um, yeah, because on Netflix, uh, they're also going to have uh, the making of Citizen Kane, co uh, Mank. That's uh, Herman Mankiewicz. He was one of the writers for the Citizen Kane. That's going to be kind of like behind the scenes of the making of Citizen Kane. But let's go back to Matt Rannies. Um, that's going to be on Netflix. And that was the last picture for Ch- Chad uh, Chadwick Bosman. And also, it stars Viola Davis. Now, I was just talking about old movies. Well, I went to see uh, Voodoo, V-U-D-U. They got a lot of old movies. You can sign up for free, and you can catch up with old movies there. Um, I saw Kate and Leopold. Remember that? Meg Ryan, when she was American Sweethearts, Sleeping in Seattle, uh, all that, all those kind of movies. And with Hugh Jackman, when we were first starting out. Kate and Leopold, which was filmed exactly the same scenes uh, by the seaport uh, that I Am Legend with Will Smith. Same exact streets. That's trivia one, trivia two. Uh, Hugh Jackman is getting lost in the city and he's trying to uh, trying to find his way back to the apartment because he comes from another uh, time zone. He comes from the 1800s. He lands in real time. A little time travel kind of film. But anyway, and the cop pulls him over because he's kind of walking Meg Ryan's dog. And it's, the cop comes over and says, you got to pick that up. And who is the cop? One of the first roles ever, Viola Davis. And the credits, it says, Patrolman. <laughs> A little bit politically incorrect. But, yeah, Viola Davis. Check her out. She has one, like one scene with Hugh Jackman. That's Kate and Leopold. A little uh, trivia there. And talking about behind the scenes, uh, there's another fad that's going to be happening. I uh, forgot to mention it. Um, my little bag of tricks. Don't mind me because I forgot to bring this out. Let's see. At home be much easier. Okay. Why the hell am I showing The Godfather 3? Okay. Um, and this, this is the original film commentary. And he says he always wanted to um, make this uh, an epilogue from Godfather 1 and 2. And uh, he states that uh, right at the beginning credits and at the end of the credits uh, of the film, he mentions this was supposed to be the death of Corleone. And the studio d- didn't want that. So he had to change some scenes at the beginning. At the end, you see an old man, Al Pacino, sitting in a chair and heart attack and he plots over. That was not the way it's supposed to be. The death of Corleone is where they actually assassinate him. And in, in the end of the film, you think he gets assassinated, but he gets wounded in the shoulder instead. Somebody else takes the shot for him. There was two shots. Um, if you haven't seen that, I don't want to reveal. But anyway, uh, the ending is he gets a shot in the shoulder. He lives. And then you see him a couple years later sitting in the chair all by himself, an old man. He's a much older version. And he just drops dead. That was not supposed to be it. Um, there is a priest in there. Uh, it's an assassinator. And an assassin dresses as a priest. And um, he's supposed to uh, kill Al Pacino. And uh, instead, the priest gets killed before he gets, to, uh, gets a chance to knock him off. So they changed the whole scene around. They're going to go to the original version. Now, the main reason I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning this because it's going to come out in Blu-ray. The commentary is not on it, as far as I heard. And uh, there's a, a special opening um, a commentary by introduction by Francis Ford Coppola, the, the director. But um, the commentary is not on it, I believe. And uh, you, you'll see the original opening and the original ending of the film. And it's gonna, finally going to be released on Blu-ray and 4K. Don't be surprised if you see the whole God's, um, Godfather trilogy re-released on 4K. That's what they're aiming for. So maybe you want to uh, wait uh, for you know, for the Godfather three to be part of the package, okay. When they release these films, they didn't do a good uh, job of transfer. I remember the film was basically a, a bluish gray, and when they transferred it, everything that the, uh, somebody had fun with the color color balance. Anybody with a camera phone, you know, you try to uh, switch the colors. Sometimes too dark, too uh, too bright, whatever. Somebody went deep orange and deep black. I mean, you can't even tell that half the time what's going on, especially Godfather two. So buyer beware. I'll be talking more about it because I'm going to get another. Uh, I got the original box uh, DVD. I'm going to get the Blu-ray. Uh, so I'm going to be talking that uh, about that on my Blu-ray special. Um, that's going to be on YouTube. Okay. Uh, and I said before, I will have that James Bond special. I will have the Godzilla special. Um, animation. Uh, and they're all going to be separate episodes. They're going to be maybe 20, 30 minutes, whatever. Uh, but they're all going to be special episodes on YouTube uploaded over there. 
Okay, uh, but so I'm going to cover this uh, on a YouTube uh, a special. But they're going to do is they, there's actually going to be two versions. One has Jake Gallenhall, as I believe, is playing Robert Evans, who was in charge of Paramount Theaters, um, Paramount Pictures, should I say? Uh, forgot the other actor. Uh, yeah, um, he was in Star Wars. Uh, Oscar Isaac, I, um, Isaac Oscar, no, that guy. Anyway, uh, and he's going to play uh, Francis Ford Coppola. And it's going to be a six-part uh, miniseries about the making of Godfather from the production point of view. And there's going to be another version where you, you see the making of, with, uh, you know, with Al Pacino lookalike, uh, Marlon Brando lookalike. So you're going to get two versions on the making of this Godfather. L let's face it. Uh, AFI, American Film Institute, put this in the top ten of greatest films of all time. Not number three. I'm talking about number one. Number three, we sometimes... We fans don't talk about it. Anyway, um, but that's going to be a couple of things like that. Mank is going to be the, about the making of uh, Citizen Kane, how Orson Welles had to fight uh, with this guy at, at the movie studio behind the scenes. So that's going to be a new angle. Don't be surprised if you're going to see other making of movies. You know, they, I mean, these studios, they're digging deep uh, for original content. Uh, but, it, you know, they, they're touching on subjects that nobody really um, really will go. You know, movie theaters, they, they, they want to stick with their Avengers uh, the franchises, but even they're losing their franchise. Theaters are going to have a really big problem if this thing doesn't turn around. Um, you know, and the theaters, and here's the funny thing. The theaters did not want to have an open window. Uh, the movie premieres, let's say, in December for the holidays, and then they want to wait the three months before it shows up in any format as far as Blu-ray, uh, pay-per-view, and then four or five months to be on cable. They found uh, some of the they they found the theaters and um, and uh, the movie studios finally agreed. Okay, how about maybe ninety days, maybe sixty days? Uh, now Universal agreed. Maybe how about um, four or five weeks? Because that way it's still fresh in people's mind, and we can cut down on the advertising. The problem is they're not opening in the theaters, so it doesn't matter. So if, when they finally agreed to that format of opening within a month, you know, trading up the film from the theaters to a uh, point of view to streaming, whatever. Um, they waited a little bit too late as far as I'm concerned, okay? So because everything's just going to streaming. I mean, you can't complain. I mean, we were just, um, I mean, an engineer just before the show would say, hey, Wonder Woman in, de in December at home? Beautiful, man, yeah? I, mean, I live downtown and the theater's expensive, 20 bucks a pop. It's like, I was, I was, I can deal with that, the audience. No problem there. Okay, so there's a couple of things. Uh, Crudes, part two. I loved the, the first one. Really great imagination. Uh, but what happened with number two? Uh, if you saw, I hate to say this. Uh, I'm glad Nicholas Cage uh, does the voice, and uh, all the other actors are really good. Uh, Grandma finally gets featured in the second film. It really goes a little bit overboard at the end. Um, it's kind of like um, Murphy's Law. Now what is going to happen? Now they're going to do this. Now what's next? Hey, so it kind of dragged in the second half. I was disappointed in, in Groove's too. Um, it, it's still funny. I got to admit, they, they do punchlines after another, but even the punchlines, uh, hit and miss. I love the first film. This one, three out of five. Okay. Um, it did open the theaters. I mean, like $14, 15000000 million. Uh, considering it uh, hardly played anywhere. So somehow it, it made its money, maybe one or two theaters in New Jersey, I don't know, uh, on the East Coast. Uh, so that means that people were interested, people did go take a chance of being in the movie house, and uh, it did draw a little bit of money. Now, if there was a full house and it opened in 3,000 theaters, which a lot of these major films do, uh, that means this film could have broke $100 million. So it probably opened at 50, maybe 50 theaters, and made $15 million. That's not too bad. So, you know, you got to adjust the... The algebra, you could say, the math. Um, but me, personally, um, I had a free pass and director to, uh, to cable, and uh, I told the crew's there. Um, I'm glad I didn't spend $20. I would have been a little eh, disappointing. Uh, well, here's another good one for the holidays. Yes. Okay, I'm not going to get into Man Mandalorian. We did that in the last episode, okay, because it's starting to get a little redundant. Yes, this is uh, Gruco. 
Is that his name? I have to write this down. Gruko. Yeah, we finally got the name. He's not a baby Yoda like everybody thought. And it was a great episode we saw. It was Ori Dawson back as Ashuka. Uh, great episode directed by uh, Dave Filoni. Uh, of course, you know, he did the Rebels animation. And a lot of those characters from the animation are going to come alive. Uh, and some surprise with the cameos. Michael Bean. Um, he played Johnny Ringo in uh, Tombstone. I saw a uh, making of a uh, YouTube this morning, so it kind of uh, reminded me of that. Tombstone, a great um, uh, Western. So we don't, see, we don't talk about only about uh, sci-fi, okay? Anyway, uh, uh, Tombstone, great uh, Western with Cut Russell. Okay. Um, anyway, Michael Bean was also in Aliens and Terminator. Terminator number one and Aliens number two. I was playing the, um, the you know. Uh, the soldier, you could say. Anyway, so I was surprised with that. Uh, anybody who saw Bush or Bosch or something like that, that actor, I forget his name, and he was in uh, the previous episode playing one of uh, the Empire bad guys, okay, so, um, which was directed by Kyle Weathers. So good for them. Talk about, um, okay, I'll be talking more about this on the YouTube specials, okay? Um, I want to move on to a couple more things. Anyway, uh, talking about Kurt Russell. That's right, the Christmas Chronicles. This time his wife, Goldie Horn, actually plays alongside him. She has a big role in the movie. And it's about a, 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 an elf who becomes human and is pissed off uh, with the elves that he destroy, tries to destroy uh, Santa, the elves, and the whole village. Uh, that's the kid who was in Deadpool number two. That really fat, obnoxious kid. Yeah, he was fat and obnoxious in this one. Uh, I prefer uh, Darlene Love had a good uh, musical number. Everything was cut in half. I don't know why. Uh, but uh, the movie was three out of five. I prefer Christmas Chronicles with Cutter Russell as Santa Claus, uh, number one instead. Okay, again, Christmas Chronicles, three out of five. Uh, Mel Gibson, he did a film called Fat, Boy, um, Fat Man. I was going to say Fat Boys. That's something else. Fat Man. Um, rated R, violence, body count, and a really, I mean, if you want to be a Scrooge this season, that's the film for you. I liked it, a four out of five. But you got to be really into that. Uh, dark side, kind of cynical. It's funny as hell, but it's violent. I mean, this this guy is another pissed off guy. Uh, he wound up with uh, coal and his stocking, and he was pissed off at Santa. And Santa said, "You were a very bad kid. You didn't deserve anything." He grows up to be an, uh, an assassin, and he's he's up there in the village trying to kill all these elves and stuff like that. Pretty sick, but pretty pretty warped, but pretty funny. It's pretty original. That's why I like it. It's completely offbeat. Okay, um, I'll talk about uh, one more thing about Star Wars. Uh, David uh, Darth Vader, David Prowse, he passed away. Uh, and it's a picture that they showed. It had all the cast, major cast members of From Empire Strikes Back, and it's only Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill. That was kind of spooky, I must say. But if, uh, I do recommend Star Wars Hallelujah. I think I need to take a sip. Okay, I'm hanging in there. Wait, hold on. Star Wars Holiday Special. No, not the one from 1970s. Oh, no, not that train wreck. This is all Lego. The Lego Star Wars Special. That's what I meant to say. Um, on the money, five out of five. And they include uh, uh, all the, the movies in there. Where she, um, uh, was it? Ray. She finds like a, a wormhole. And she goes through the wormhole and she goes through all the films, all the best highlights. I think it, uh, and they cover a lot. Uh, where Luke finds himself and Darth Vader finds himself because they're going through the different timelines. I thought it was pretty funny. It's on the money. Anthony Daniels does the voice of C-3PO. Lando Carissian is voiced by Billy D. Williams. And uh, what was the name? Rose? The, everybody trashed on, on The Last Jedi, uh, the Asian uh, actress. And she does the voice of herself. Okay, they got three of the originals. Uh, a lot of the other ca characters are, are voice actors. Uh, if you ever see the Batman and Superman animation films, those are the actors who appear there to do the voices for the Lego special. The Lego special, highly recommended. Um, uh, like I said, five out of five. Okay, now, Wonder Woman. Let's go back. Uh, what's going on with that? What's happening is... Um, a lot of these films, Godzilla vs. King Kong, um, 
HBO Max, they're trying to compete against the big boys, like I said. Um, they're bidding for Godzilla vs. King Kong. 007 is still hanging up in air. It doesn't look like it's going to hit the big screen. Too many bad uh, reviews already coming in. They're saying a lot of multiple reshoots. Uh, they had to change some of the scenes around. That's not good news. That's what happened with Wonder Woman. They had a preview uh, for a general audience, and the studio did more reshoots. That's not a good sign. Sometimes it's better leave the film alone as it is and take your chances, because once you start uh, cutting into the narrative and you start changing some of the plot things and says, so, okay, this sub, uh, subplot doesn't work, let's cut this out or trim it, less than uh, more with the love story or more with the action, you know, once you start playing with those kind of elements, it's the whole, I don't know, the, the, the feeling of the picture changes a lot, okay? Uh, you can change a picture big time in the editing, okay? Uh, that's what happened to Wonder Woman. They had a, a, a preview, audience hated it. And they didn't take a chance. They just said, okay, let's dump it somewhere instead of waiting for springtime. Also, a lot of these films, when they go to reshoots, they need to borrow money from banks. And that, uh, you know, that interest rates starts going up. That's what happened with James Bond. Uh, James Bond has to make about $2 billion to break even, which is ridiculous. They're not talking about the price. But last I heard, it was $300 million, And any picture has to break uh, three times over. So it goes $300 million, uh, it's got to break uh, 600 to break even because uh, even after 300 they got to spend money in advertising and that adds up to the course. And then to make any money, it has to go three times over. So it has to make a billion dollars. Now, nobody's talking about the price tell on this thing, okay? Uh, they say, well, it's about $300 million. No, everybody know is a lot more, okay? Um, for example, Star Wars, um, that's a Skywalker. By the time they got done, it was almost $500 million. And so, okay, it made $1.3 billion. But they spent so much money on reshoots and in advertising. Every time you turn on the TV, the Rise of Skywalker is in theaters now. Go see it. Go see it. 3D. Go see it. See it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I won't see it. Um, so when they spend that much money on it, that's what happens. Okay? Uh, and pretty much in a nutshell. There's a lot more details, but that's all the business side, and that's kind of boring. But anyway, but again, want the woman at home for Christmas? Yeah, why not? Okay? Um, so that's basically that's what's happening uh, with that. Um, now, the best and worst, I really don't have any. Because, well, I, some of favorites, I, um, okay, let's go to that other list. I didn't finish last time. Um, the Five Bloods, uh, Spike Lee. I like the film a lot, okay, four out of five. Most people will not like it because the way he does the narrative, uh, the, kind of, the actor's actually looking in the camera, you know, like, Hey, look what we're doing now. Um, and it's going through that fourth row. Some people don't like it. I, it. That doesn't bother me. Okay? And everybody's saying, again, Netflix is kind of pushing it, that Del Roy Lindo, and I said this before, okay, that he deserves uh, an Oscar nomination or a Golden Globe. Now they're talking about it. So who's watching who over here? Hello? But anyway, um, there's a lot of films that I like. Uh, Bill and Ted, the third uh, adventure, journey, whatever you call it, uh, I love the film, four out of five. But you got to be a Bill and Ted fan. If you're not, like, if you didn't like the second film, you probably won't like this one. Uh, the two daughters playing them, uh, they had the, uh, you know, the, the mannerisms, like, oh, most excellent. Yeah, dude. You know, you got to be really into that. If not, that could be annoying, but I liked it. Um, I mentioned 21 Bridges. A lot of films, uh, for example, um, I mentioned uh, uh, Trial Chicago 7. That's going to get nominations already. They're talking about that. Um, um, like, I, w I know a lot of you are not really into uh, the Oscars and Golden Globes and because the ratings have, have been disastrous in the past couple of years. I mean, they've nominated The Joker for 12 nominations. Are you kidding me? That's one of the worst movies of the year. Talking about one of the worst, I can actually mention something that I did not like. I'll bring this up right now because I bought the magazine. Why not? That's right. I mentioned that, and some people really got on my case on, uh, on YouTube. It's like, what? It's one of the best pictures of the year. This film was friggin' horrible. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? That's the soundtrack. A loud volume. You're sitting there, and you're hearing this knock, knock, knock with scratching. It's like, it's like whoops, sorry. Sorry, Mr. Mike. Like scratching um, the chalkboard. Really annoying. And because, oh, that's a masterpiece. Annoying. This is um, 
Christopher Nolan's version of James Bond, where he does a little bit of time travel, and things actually go backwards. There's a, a good chase scene, i got to admit, that's about the only scene I like, where um, instead of the luggage getting thrown out of the car, the luggage is actually getting thrown into the car while the car is going backwards. Pretty slick, okay, but, I mean, he was trying to do his James Bond. They were trying to talk to him to his James Bond, and he didn't want to do it. Talking about James Bond, it was like... Um, for your eyes only, that uh, Christopher, no, excuse me, Steven Spielberg wanted to direct James Bond. But th- at that particular time, you do E.T.'s, you know, uh, you, you know, you, you do the Jaws. Uh, mm. So they, it's, they didn't think he would be good director for uh, directing a, a James Bond picture, and that was for, for your eyes only, okay? Uh, so George Lucas said, listen, don't worry about that. When he found out uh, Spielberg they didn't get the gig, he said, we'll, we'll do our own in, uh, James Bond. Uh, we can call him Indiana Jones. And the same thing like uh, George Lucas wanted to do Flash Gordon. He couldn't get the rights. And so I said, you know what? I do my own Star Wars. How about that? Screw you guys. Okay? Um, like they, um, they mentioned uh, 007. Uh, the next one uh, might be a female or whatever. And I always said, I know I'm kind of repeating myself, but, you know, you get 009. Who's been mentioned in the books and it was mentioned in Octopussy? As a matter of fact, the Bowl Nine showed up in Octopussy, but he was in makeup uh, as a clown and he he gets shot right at the beginning of the movie and he has an Easter egg, a Faberge egg, and that was the whole Octopussy was uh, was about. So there's a Double Nine in the books in the movie uh, about Double Eight, a Double Six. You gotta have a whole franchise right there, you know. So I, I wouldn't mind uh, a, a sort of well Jinx. Halle Berry, uh, what was it, to, uh, to Die For or whatever, the, the last uh, Pierce Bronson, uh, 007. And Halle Berry almost became Jinx's uh, uh, spinoff. They couldn't get the budget down. They said $80 million is too much for a, a Jinx movie. Just get it done. $80 million? James Bond movies are costing $200 million nowadays, you know? And so they almost had a, a spinoff. They didn't follow up on that. So, I mean, if they want to go that route, leave James Bond as a boring English guy, okay, and... You know, you can you got double one all the way to double nine to content and continue the franchise and, and do a spinoff. So I don't get it. Okay. So anyway, that's what I want to uh, tell you guys. Um, yeah, Christopher Nolan's "Wanna Be James Bond" failure, one of the worst movies of the year. I'm gonna do a breakdown in January again, exclusively on YouTube. But there will be a, a, a show done at home from the studio, uh, which will be tailor made for Manhattan Neighborhood Network Studios. In between, I'm going to have little little mini uh, uh, video line express shows, okay? In between, uh, these two shows are going to be repeated, but it will be, uh, be a brand new one in January and February. I'm not sure of the date. And all the special little editions will be on YouTube. That's it, everybody. Happy holidays. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And uh, make sure you check out YouTube. I will have the updates there, okay? And uh, I'll see you in the next show.